Hi there, welcome to our talk. Kubernetes is experiencing an exponential growth, but the benchmark tools to evaluate Kubernetes infrastructures are still catching up. Do you wonder how to evaluate and compare the performance of two Kubernetes platforms for a target use case? Do you wish there was one tool that can you know, point and shoot at a Kubernetes cluster and get you all the key performance metrics summarized in a nutshell? Well, then you are at the right place. In this talk, we present KBench, which is a framework to prescriptively benchmark a Kubernetes platform. I am Karthik Ganesan and my co-presenter is Yong Lee. So when it comes to you know, performance, there are multiple aspects to look at. Some aspects related to the control plane include responsiveness, meaning how long does a target platform take to respond to my change requests? Next is scalability. How well does the control plane of this particular platform scale um, say I want to deploy 1,000 pods concurrently. Can this um, particular platform handle that? And then how resilient is this platform to recover from failures? On the other hand, when it comes to the data plane or application performance, there are basic things like the core infrastructure capabilities, like how powerful are the CPUs or you know, what are the IO and the network capabilities of the underlying infrastructure? as these things can have a significant impact on the application performance. Say one has a network intensive application and want to know how it is expected to perform on a particular platform or compare multiple platforms for this particular case to choose one. And then comes aspects like resource efficiency. Right? hey, can I pack more, more pods on one platform or another without having a performance impact? And lastly, performance isolation characteristics are becoming more and more important. How will my performance be affected when there are noisy neighbors? There are a multitude of small tools to evaluate some of these aspects specifically uh, some are reliable, some are not, some are accurate, some only provide a very coarse grained picture. And it can get quite tedious if one wants to get the full performance picture you know, for a particular platform. Having gone through you know, some of these pain points, we rolled up our sleeves and started putting a versatile framework together so that we can get all, we can benchmark all these various aspects you know, with ease. That is how we got to KBench. So what is KBench? KBench is a configurable framework to prescriptively deploy and manipulate Kubernetes objects. And in this process, it lets us benchmark both the control and the data plane performance aspects with ease. For example, on the control plane side, you can ask KBench to deploy 1000 Nginx pods concurrently and observe pod startup latencies at millisecond granularity. Say for data plane, you can deploy um, a persistent volume and record asynchronous read write bandwidth to it from a pod. KBench has an extensible design and provides a multitude of configuration options for the end user. So using these options, one can orchestrate pretty much any workflow with ease using your target workloads. Each use case in KBench is represented by a simple and a prescriptive configuration file. At the end of your runs, KBench provides an intuitive set of performance metrics and a lot of detailed diagnostic data that can be very useful to you know, go ahead and resolve some of these performance issues. So, Let's take a closer look at the features offered by KBench separately for the control and the data plane aspects again. For the control plane, KBench provides accurate and fine-grained critical path latencies for your workloads. You know, when you think about some of these latencies, you can think of like, you know, hey, what is the pod scheduling latency, pod initialization latency, 
you know, startup latencies, etc. But if you think about it, right, um, Kubernetes is a declarative system where you specify the target state of the cluster and the cluster eventually gets to this target state via a bunch of asynchronous events that happen in the system. So what is the latency for my trigger change? Well, it is certainly not how long kubectl took to you know, say submit a request, right? It is actually how long the cluster took to get to this final state that I desired. So when it comes to measuring these latencies of triggered changes, we need to keep track of the various events in the system until the cluster reaches the target state. In KBench, we use a novel methodology to keep track of both the client and the server side timestamps of all these different events to tackle this problem and provide meaningful control path latencies for you. For the data plane, one can evaluate application performance using real containerized benchmarks in Kubernetes pods. While one can use their own workloads, they can also leverage built-in workloads provided by KBench to stress specific infrastructure resources. For instance, you can use Redis MemTier that comes pre-built in KBench to stress the compute and memory aspects, or say the FIO benchmark to you know, stress the IO aspects, etc. So using these as artifacts, one can you know, scale up or scale out resource usage to study infrastructure performance. Scale up meaning you know, use a single pod to increasingly stress a particular resource category or scale out meaning you know, add more pods to the system to consume resources you know, in a particular category. KBench also includes built-in blueprints of workloads that take advantage of these benchmarks to evaluate you know, um, different aspects of data plane performance. These aspects can include things like, hey, uh, can, I, you know, can I get a, uh, an info, some information on what is the pod density that this particular um, you know, framework can, I mean, this particular platform can achieve, et cetera. So now that you know, having given a overview of KBench, Yong will discuss the different elements of KBench to construct a workload to evaluate the different control plane aspects. To you, Yong. I'm happy to be here presenting KBench control plane. First, let's start with some basic terminology. When we're talking about KBench actions, we are referring to the Kubernetes object lifecycle and DevOps operations, such as create, delete, list, scale. Actions can be specific to resource types. For example, you can create any type of resource, but you can only scale certain type of object like deployment. Actions run with action and resource type specific options. For example, if you are creating a service, you can specify service type and ports as options. On the other hand, if you are scaling a deployment, you can specify number of replica as an option. Multiple actions run one after another for the same resource object from an action chain. Action chain is uh, useful when you want to define a list of actions that are dependent on each other. For example, you want to create a list of pods before updating and deleting them. Based on actions, we define operation. An operation in KBench contains a collection of action chains and each action chain is executed for one particular resource type. Action chains for different resource types in one operation will run in parallel. We also define predicates in KBench, which are conditions under which a particular operation will be triggered. There are many different types of predicates. For example, uh, you can define a predicate that check a status of your running object. You can also define a predicate that run command and check the return status of the command and the only run operation under certain scenario. You can even define predicates that are examine a runtime environment inside a container. 
Kubernetes define a set of metadata before running your workload that attach operation thread ID that manipulate a certain set of object. And later you can refer those metadata as labels for filtering and selection purpose. Of course, you can pass your customized defined user labels and use your uh, use for selection purpose later. Now let's look at the uh, overall design framework. Here is a running Kubernetes cluster with a bunch of objects. Kbench accept a Kbench config file along with standard Kubernetes YAMI files. The Kubernetes config parser and dispatcher logic is responsible for parsing uh, those config files. It depends on what type of resources you configure to measure and benchmark. It generates a list of resource managers. Each resource manager is responsible for managing the life cycle and events and resource um, metric collection for a particular resource type. For example, a pod would be responsible for managing pod resources. And you can specify for each resource type what actions and operations you want to run. Here, for example, for pod, you define a list of uh, actions to create a pod first and then update and then run command inside a pod. And for other type of resources, you can define a totally different action list. You can put all them together in one operation. And those actions for different resource type will run in parallel. But the action chain for one particular resource type will run sequentially. And you can specify concurrency. And resource manager will check your concurrency configuration and maintain a thread pool of appropriate size for that resource type. So you can use the key labels, key bench pre-attached labels and your uh, customized defined labels for resource selection purpose. You can define predicates to guard your operations so all of those come together to form a very flexible execution plan you know, where you can define your workflow to be executed uh, on certain type of resource at a certain concurrency under a given condition against a, a pre-selected res uh, resources. In addition, Kbench exposes container interface to outside users so users can run command micro benchmark inside the container and micro performance accordingly. We also integrate promises and will front for resource monitoring and triage purpose. The framework is based on client Go and can run on different platforms such as vSphere, OpenShift and GKE Kubernetes offerings. Let's look at a list of example resources, actions, and configuration options. For pod, you can create, list, get, run, copy, update, and delete, perform those actions. And for different actions, as we mentioned, you can configure to run uh, with different options. For example, uh, all the actions, you can specify concurrency and the sleep time, which is the time in seconds, uh, you want to sleep after each action. For create, you can specify image pulling policy, image uh, to use, and yummy spec. And run for run action, you can specify the command to run. And for copy, you can specify the path, local path, and container path, etc. And for other actions, you can specify you know labels, label key, and label values, etc. For deployment. In addition to the, all the above actions, it also supports scale action. Skill, uh, and a cr its create action uh, has some additional options like a number of replicas. For replication controller and a state set, we provide a similar set of actions and uh, configuration options. Kbench also support some other type of resource like namespaces, service, config map, uh, et cetera. Here's a use case example uh, layout as a configuration file. 
you want to define your uh, workflow to run no more than six seconds. That's a timeout on the top. And here you define a list of operations and your first operation will be guarded by a predicate that checks the running status of your pods initializer. And after that, you define the body of your first operation. You want to, here you want to create deployment using this given YAMI file at a concurrency four. And then in parallel with that, you want to create pods and run a self script and attach these labels at a concurrency of two. And after your first operation, you can define another, more operations, which will run after uh, one after another. KBench produces C compliant API metrics. It reports 50%, uh, 90%, 99% API latency, uh, latencies and uh, API responsible time. For certain operations, also break down report fine grained critical pass uh, components. For example, for pod creation, it will report uh, scheduling, initialization, image pooling, and uh, startup uh, latency on the node. It has improved accuracy compared to some existing benchmark. Current, currently, uh, Kubernetes server side uh, only give a very cross grained uh, timing information, runs to seconds. So when you want to study some metrics as millisecond level, uh, this is not surfacing. So we rely both server and client side timing information. And we use uh, even the callback man mechanism and it checks the triggering reason and the condition under which the event is triggered and measure and uh, record timing information accordingly. So for example, here we want to start a, uh, the pod initialization uh, scheduling latency at a different concurrency. Using an existing benchmark, it just give us all zeros because the pod scheduling is very short running operation. On the other hand, using KBench allows us to report the detailed client side metrics at millisecond level uh, for different concurrency. This is pretty much about the KBench control plane features. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Karsik to talk about data plane features. Thank you. Thanks, Jiang. Let's take a closer look at benchmarking that data plane using KBench. With the rich container interface that KBench offers, one can orchestrate pretty much any workflow. Say you have a use case in mind and you want to evaluate how your use case will perform on a target Kubernetes cluster, KBench can help you with that. You can start with the create operation, using which you can deploy your Kubernetes resources with your target containers and assign them some labels. You can just reuse the YAML spec of any Kubernetes artifacts that you might have. Labeling these resources helps us filter and select specific resources on which we want particular actions to be performed. That way we can orchestrate different workflows with ease. Next, you can copy any workload artifacts or workload specific configuration files for current run into your containers. Again, you can use these labels to selectively you know, uh, choose those uh, Kubernetes objects to which you want to apply this action. Then you can run commands inside the pods to trigger your workflows. One of my favorite features of KBench is the ability to trigger actions using conditional predicates. These predicates can be Kubernetes system-based or something that is evaluated inside a container. Say you have a particular server plot deployed and want to generate load from a client pod against this particular server pod. You can wait until the server pod gets to running or even better, you can wait until the server process inside the container gets to a particular state using these predicates. Now maybe again, you want to copy you know, your results out of these containers and to, and to the client from which you are orchestrating all this. And then you can go ahead and use the delete action to clean up your cluster. 
Now having looked at, you know, how to orchestrate a workflow using your workloads um, in KBench, let's take a look at some of the pre-integrated workloads that come with KBench to stress different infrastructure dimensions. These pre-integrated workloads are ready to be used out of the box. As you can see on this particular table, you know, you have workloads Redis mem tier that can be used to stress CPU and the memory aspects. You can get aggregate transaction throughput across all the different pods in a particular cluster. And you can also get transaction latencies for you know, your uh, deployments. And with FIO, you can get read write bandwidth for various read write ratios, block sizes uh, on ephemeral and uh, persistent volumes. IO ping is integrated with KBench to get IO latency on ephemeral and persistent volumes. You have iperf3, uh, which can provide you interpod TCP UDP bandwidth information. Uh, there are blueprints with varying pod placements on nodes, zones, regions, et cetera, to get you, you know, more specific information. Uh, and that is QPuff integrated into KBench and it can provide you know, uh, interpod network latency. And again, there are blueprints with varying pod placement that can orchestrate you know, QPuff for you. Typically, the end results or you know, the generated performance metrics only paint you know, uh, the final picture. Right? Um, if you notice an anomaly or a performance issue, just this data is not enough. Analysis and iterative improvements need deep infrastructure diagnostics. KBench provides support to inject performance and diagnostic data to dashboarding services like Wavefront and Grafana. These are done by using distributed telegraph uh, data collectors, and they can be configured with you know, supported output plugin to view results on your dashboarding platform of choice. These telegraph collectors are fed with thousands of handcrafted uh, performance metrics that can be monitored for Linux and ESX hosts. This data can be valuable when correlated with actual performance results to deep dive performance issues and resolve them. Having talked about the data plane features of KBench, let's take a look at some example use cases where we have put KBench to good use. KBench was used extensively in evaluating and improving VMware's Kubernetes products. In this use case, we deploy a standard Java benchmark inside multiple Kubernetes pods. We use KBench to find the maximum cluster uh, level aggregate transaction throughput uh, for these uh, Java workload that can be achieved on you know, different Kubernetes clusters, but with the same hardware resources. Kevin showed how a virtualized Kubernetes cluster can actually beat the performance of a bare metal cluster, both using the same hardware. It also enabled us to get deep insights into what was the root cause for some of these performance differences. Some of the results generated by KBench were so impactful that they were used by VMware CEO Pat Gelsinger for Kubernetes product announcements in the opening keynote of our annual conference. Here is another example of a data plane pre-integrated blueprint called DP internode. This blueprint automatically deploys two pods on two nodes using anti-affinity rules. It uses a headless service to run iperf3 across the pods to provide TCP UDP bandwidth information and qperf3 to provide the network latency information. These blueprints can be run all these different blueprints for both control and the data plane can be run as a suite to get all these key metrics just in a nutshell. In summary, we presented KBench, which is a highly configurable and easy to use benchmark framework to evaluate Kubernetes performance. It can be valuable for co competitive benchmarking across multiple platforms to identify performance issues, root cause them using diagnostics, and iteratively improve your platform performance. KBench is open sourced and we would like to welcome everyone to use the tool. If you have a need, provide us feedback and to contribute to the project. We thank you for your time and we are happy to answer any questions you might have.